Today we're gonna to do an examination of the abdomen. So please slide down. And bring your shirt up, please. So the first thing to do is examine the, the abdomen. So we're going to inspect and we're looking for the shape. We're also looking for any scars or any stretch marks or anything else that might be there. Um, now, one thing to be aware of is where a patient's waist is. The patient's waist is at the level of their umbilicus. It's not where they wear their pants. Some patients have low-waisted pants or high-waisted pants. That is not the determination of where their waist is. So the umbilicus is gonna split the abdomen into quadrants. So up and down is left and right, and then um, sideways is gonna be upper and lower. So we have the left upper, right lower, sorry, left upper, left lower, right upper, right lower. And you need to be familiar with the different organs that are in each location. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to examine it. And we notice the shape. The next thing we need to do is auscultate the patient's abdomen. The next thing we need to do is auscultate. So we're gonna use the bell of our stethoscope. And in the previous video, when we demonstrated how we did the peripheral pulses, we actually auscultated renal sorry, our, um, aorta, renal, iliac, and femoral pulses. So in the process of doing that, you've actually auscultated in all four quadrants. So if in the process of listening to those arteries, you heard bowel sounds, then you don't need to listen again. You just listen once and move on. If you didn't hear bowel sounds during that initial um, examination, then what you need to do is continue to auscultate for up to five minutes. You can't really say that bowel sounds are absent until you've listened for a full five minutes. But usually, in the normal process of examining the abdomen, you're already gonna have heard bowel sounds. So you can move on. The next step is to do what is called light palpation. So you can take one hand, and I want you to have your thumb and your finger together. The tendency is for everyone to do this, and this is not correct. So, like this place your fingers flat on the patient's abdomen and then press gently and swirl. So gentle and swirl. And we're gonna look at the patient's face as we make our way around their abdomen. And the reason that you're doing this is you're looking to see if they wince. And you can ask them, does this hurt? No, you, that's why you wanna look. Um, and again, it's gentle. What we're just doing is with the light palpation is we're assessing for tenderness. The next step is to do what's known as deep palpation. And now we're assessing for masses. Same technique, one hand down, flat, the other hand on top of it. The top hand presses, try and relax your bottom hand. So we're going to press a little bit deeper and you do that same swirling action. So it's kind of like this going a little bit deeper. Avoid going directly in the center on a woman, especially the super pubic area. She's always gonna be tender there. Um, and now you've assessed for deep palpation. Um, the most common thing that you'll feel is fecal mass for whatever it's worth. One thing that you might find with your patient is that they're ticklish. So the way that you deal with the ticklish patient is by being more firm. If you touch them very lightly, that's actually gonna trigger more ticklishness. So you need to be comfortable with yourself and palpate with authority. So when you, so don't be like, you know, you're not, you're being firm and that's going to help prevent them from being as ticklish. Now, sometimes when you do this, you're gonna feel patients clamp, uh, clamp down with their abdomen and they need to relax in order for you to be able to palpate through the abdominal wall. So if they're tamping down with their, with their abs, then you need to tell them, look, you need to relax and until you relax, we really can't do this exam. And they might say, well, that's fine. I'm never gonna relax but then you can't do the exam. So just be aware that they've got to relax as you do it, um, or you're just poking into their muscles, you're not actually assessing the abdomen. 
So after we've done the light and the deep palpation, we're gonna do what's called special palpation, and we're gonna be palpating for the liver and then the spleen. So the liver, typically on a normal person, is gonna be living underneath the rib cage, underneath the costal margin. So if you palpate here in the abdomen, you're never going to feel it. But if you, know, you never know what kind of patient you're dealing with. You might have a patient with an enlarged abdomen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fingers like this, we're gonna start low in the abdomen, and we're going to press forward and backwards. And so if the, if the liver is up in this area here, as you do that, you'll slide off it and then bump into it with your fingers. So what you're doing in this initial part is if they have an enlarged liver, you should hopefully feel it in that part. If you don't feel it there, then <clears throat> the assumption is that the liver is up above the costal margin. So we're gonna place one hand underneath the patient's rib cage, push the other hand into the costal margin, and then take a deep breath, please. And relax. As they take a breath, the diaphragm is gonna be pushing the liver downwards, and it may bump into your fingers. So it might not. If you don't feel anything, then don't worry about it. But if you do feel it, that's what you're feeling. The other technique is called the hook technique. You're going to hook into the patient's ribs, and then ask the patient to take a deep breath. And breathe out. So the three techniques, first fingers this way, then lift up, press in, take a breath, and then finally the hook technique, take a breath please. Next we have a palpation of the spleen. So for this, we're going to reach across, lift up, and then press in 45 degree angle and take a breath. And the spleen lives up fairly high up in the in the uh, rib cage and will be pressed down by the diaphragm. You typically will not feel the spleen unless it's at least three times larger than usual. And that's the assessment of the abdomen. Percussion of the abdomen um, is not gonna be part of our normal sequence of events, but you do need to be familiar with how to do it. So it's very similar to percussing the lungs. You wanna make sure that the first joint is against the patient's abdomen. Don't be up like this or it won't work. So pressing against the abdomen and then And that's how you percuss the abdomen.